From overture to finale, welcome to Theatreland Radio. Welcome to Behind the Mirror of Music with Danny Cohen. The 
Hello everyone and welcome to Behind the Mirror of Music with me, Danny Cohen. You just heard Lindsay Hathley with the intro from Joseph, followed by Ben Kramer with Any Dream Will Do. This is because Joseph will be one of our themes tonight, as this week's guest made his West End deb debut in the role. Yes, Darren Day will be with us tonight to tell us all about his career, life after lockdown and his new role in Chicago. And speaking of Chicago... Jazz. I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down And all that jazz Start the car, I know a whoopee spot Where the gin is cold but the piano's hot It's just a noisy hole where there's a nightly brawl And all that Pia Dowers with all that jazz from Chicago. And now let's welcome West End's new Billy Flynn, Darren Day. Hello, Danny. Hello, Darren. What are you up to right now? Right now? Well, I've been, I felt very fortunate um, during lockdown last year because uh, obviously it was such a, 
you know, it was such an adjustment and a shock for us all to sort of get our heads around what was going on. I still stand in the shop and look at everyone with the masks on and you get that reality sort of bites moment. And uh, you just think, God, if we'd, have, if we'd have seen these images as a premonition, you know, pre-March of last year, it just looked like a scene from a movie. Um, and it's been a, a strange time. Um, up to now, I've been lucky. Last year, I, I did uh, I did two online concerts. So I, I played Joseph again um, towards the beginning of the first lockdown. Never imagined in my early 50s I would have to play Joseph again. Fortunately, I didn't have to put a loincloth on. I'm not sure that would have looked as pretty as it did 20 years ago. But, um, but they got 30 members of the cast together of previous West End and World Tours and UK Tours. And I played Joseph and that was a sort of a two month commitment, lots of Zoom rehearsals and lots of recordings. The guys would come to the house, they would set their mixing desk up down one end of the lounge with masks on, they'd set a microphone up down the other end of the lounge for me and would keep the masks on just until I sang. Um, and I went straight on from doing that as Joseph to playing Jesus in a Godspell, in the Godspell online concert. And that sort of repeated what I did at the beginning of my career in 1993, because when I, when I did the Palladium, um, which was my big break, if you like, um, the first night of Joseph, Stephen Schwartz, who wrote Godspell, and the, his producer came back to see me and asked me to play Jesus on a, on a new cast recording. And we recorded that at Abbey Road Studios, which was such an honour to get the chance to do that. So I remember the headlines in 93 being Darren Day from Joseph to Jesus. And I ended up sort of repeating that same thing last year, which was, was a great pleasure. And I managed to do quite a few online things. But now um, I'm going to be, uh, I'm about five weeks away from starting rehearsals for Chicago. And um, so I've just started doing all the promo, you know, photo shoots and, and, and interviews. And it's brilliant to be working again. It's just a bit of a shock to the system, you know, after sitting in front of a box set or 50 with, uh, with copious amounts of chocolate. Um, so now I'm having to get my weight to the right weight, match fit and everything. Um, but Billy Flynn in Chicago is definitely one of my bucket list tick offs, if you like. Um, and, uh, and when I was offered this about six weeks ago, I really was, I was probably and am probably the most excited about a theatre role that I've been probably since Joseph 28 years ago. Um, it's just one, I, I love this show. I've been to see it many times with mates in it um, and actually had a couple of mates in the role of Billy. Um, and so to get this opportunity to do six months of playing Billy Flynn, I'm really genuinely excited and it's an amazing feeling sort of 28 years on from, from my musical theatre debut to feel really genuinely excited and buzzed up about um, playing this role. And I think what's going to be amazing, you know, for all of us, for all the cast and the whole team, backstage, front of house, creative, everybody, you know, that first night that we go on stage in front of an audience in September, it's going to be like no other night that we've ever experienced because of, you know, because of what we've gone through all of us over the last 16 months or so. Um, that first night on stage doing what we love doing and haven't been able to do for so long. I think it's going to be to share that with a, with a, with a company and with a team. Uh, I think it's going to be quite emotional, Danny, really. So, so to answer your question, at the moment, I'm... I'm, you know, sort of learning the script, learning the songs, doing promo, and just getting myself match fit and match ready uh, to to go on stage in September. Rehearsals are literally, as I said, five weeks away. So, just getting ready. I'm in the gym again, first time, <laughs> trying to shake off all the chocolate that I've eaten. Um, so it's just brilliant to be busy again, Danny. Fabulous. As you said, your first big break was in Joseph. What was that like? Oh, Danny, I mean, I always feel like the cliche police are going to come and arrest me when I talk about Joseph, because it was an absolute dream come true for me. I, I played Joseph when I was 12, or maybe 11, actually. It was the end of, like, junior school. So I would have been about 11, and I played Joseph in a school concert. 
and I, 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 I just remember the magic, the, the magic of that show. And then when I was five years old, my granddad on my father's side, he was a music hall act. He played vaudeville and actually um, supported like Laurel and Hardy um, when they came over to, to the UK. And he talked to me many, many times and showed me billboards when I was a kid of the London Palladium. And so the London Palladium was something that I'd always been aware of since I was a kid. And when I was five, he and my dad took me to the London Palladium to see, uh, it, it, they, they, they were called Morecambe and Wise. They were a very, very famous, very popular UK uh, comedy uh, double act. And I can remember even as young as five, Danny sitting in that audience thinking, oh, I'd love to, to be here one day. And then in 1991, because I, I was and am friends with Jason Donovan, I went to Jason's opening night at the Palladium as Joseph. And I sat there thinking, oh, this is like the best thing I've ever seen. I would love to be in this one day, never thinking I would ever be. One year later in 1992, uh, again, because I was mates and am mates with Philip Schofield, I was at Philip's opening night. Um, and again, sat there in awe of this wonderful musical, but never ever dreaming that 12 months later, it would be my opening night. And um, I just went and auditioned with many others at the Palladium. And I thought to myself, if I don't get this gig, which was very unlikely, because I wasn't a profile person at that point, um, I just remember thinking, but I can tell my granddad that I stood on the London Palladium stage for three minutes and didn't audition. So I auditioned, I sang Any Dream Will Do, sang Close Every Door in front of uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's creative team. And then three days later, I was offered a recall, went back, back to the Palladium the following week, again sang both songs and this time in front of Andrew um, and then three days later I was I was in Marks and Spencer's in Golders Green I will never forget mobile mobile phones had just come out I just had a new mobile phone for the first time and my manager called me and I will never forget his words he said the dream coat's yours mate and it just stuck with me and even when I say that line I know it sounds a bit show busy, but I go goosebumps because it was like, you know, getting a chance to play Joseph as I did when I was 11, getting the chance to be at the Palladium as I'd, I'd been to with my grandfather, heard so much about as a child, watched two of my very good friends play this role at the Palladium. And it was just a dream come true. And the next six weeks of rehearsals, um, you know, I was suddenly on the front cover of all the teen magazines and I was on every chat show and uh, and the next six weeks were just like a whirlwind. And then to suddenly be there on the opening night and to be playing this dream role, it's just, it is career wise, it's like no other night in my whole career because it, it was just, I, it was just, I constantly pinched myself um, all the way through rehearsals all the way through the run at the Palladium, particularly the first night. I just couldn't believe that it was me. And that I used to think, I'm gonna wake up soon. And this is gonna have been a very long dream, you know. But it was just magical, Danny. And I am, I'm so grateful to that, to that job uh, because everything that sort of has happened to me since really came from that first night, you know. Absolutely, it was um, a wonderful time. It was Danny, yeah, yes. yeah. You're listening to Theatre Land Radio. A thousand dreams to be dreamed, and I have to dream of you. For no one really knows the feeling deep inside, and the hurt. There's no one like Estella No one ever held a candle to Estella on a pedestal That's how I see you Estella More than words can say Do dreams come true? Or do they simply Fade away, Estella. Each 
and every day don't break my heart or I will simply fade Just to know I'm sharing the world with you For if I never see the same light in your eyes I'll know why and slowly start to die Cause there's no one like a star No one ever held a candle to Estella or on a pedestal that's how I see you, Estelle. More than words can say, do dreams come true? Or do they simply fade away? Each and every day. to come will your face still haunt me your eyes still shine for i will never find someone who makes me feel the way you do it's you and only you cause there's no one like a star no one ever held a candle to estella that's how I see you stand More than words can say Do dreams come true Or do they simply fade away Each and every day That was Darren Day with I Love You Estella from Great Expectations, which was, I think, the follow-up to Joseph, or was that Summer Holiday? Yeah, uh, Great Expectations was just after. So I, so I did Joseph at the Palladium, then I did the Godspell album with Stephen Schwartz at Abbey Road Studios, which, again, was just like a, a, a pinch-yourself moment. You know, I'm a massive Beatles fan. To be at Abbey Road... And I had to do that shot outside, you know, on the zebra crossing. I had to do that. You got to do that. But to be in Abbey Road Studios recording with Stephen Schwartz conducting us all, it, it was incredible. And then straight after that, um, I was offered to play Pip in a musical adaptation of Great Expectations. I was a massive fan of the book, of the Dickens book. Loved the story and the characters. And I... Uh, and I actually did that for three years consecutively at Christmas um, over the next, uh, so I did that in 93 Christmas, 94 and 95. 95, I was, um, I, I, during that time, I went back and toured with Joseph in the UK. And then I was doing Barry Manilow's musical Copacabana at the Prince of Wales Theatre, which to this day is one of my favourite shows I've ever done. It was a great honour to work with Barry. Um, and during that run, I was um, the producers for Summer Holiday, which was going to be happening in 1996, came to see me and offered me the role of Cliff Richard, you know, Don, the role that Cliff had played in the iconic um, late 60s musical, uh, sorry, movie rather, musical movie, Summer Holiday. Um, and it, it, it was two and a half years of my life. You know, I, I, I did a six month run and we broke the box office records, which again was a dream. Uh, and then we toured, we did the West End, um, and uh, it was very special. And actually from that gig, I, I got a record contract with Simon Cowell at RCA Records. Uh, in the days where he wore his trousers in the right place, he never wore them up there when I knew him. Yeah. <laughs> they, were, they were down. But um, 
Yeah, and I got myself a record deal. We released Summer Holiday as a, as a single and, and as an album. Cliff Rich came and did backing vocals for us on the album, which was just, again, amazing for me. Um, and Summer Holiday went into the top 20. So the, the week that the, the show opened, um, Summer Holiday went into number 17 in the top 20, which again, it was just, it was just like a boyhood dream. Like the first few years of my career were just, when I look back on them now, I wish I could have sat back and sort of taken it in a little bit more because when things suddenly go like that, um, it's such a whirlwind, everything goes so fast. And now I look back on that time and just think how lucky I was to have done the things that I did. Um, you know, Cliff, Cliff came and sang with me on every opening night. At the end, you'd get up and we'd sing some holiday together. And I've had so many nights like that, Danny. You know, uh, one that I remember very vividly, which will be up there with singing with Cliff and my opening night of Joseph was when I did We Will Rock You. And on the opening night, we're standing on stage singing Bohemian Rhapsody and the, the screens at the back go up and on a platform comes forward uh, Roger, Roger Taylor on the drums, Ryan May on the guitar. And we stood there singing Bohemian, I still go goosebumps. We, we're standing there singing Bohemian Rhapsody with Roger Taylor and Brian May. And um, I just feel really lucky, Danny, to have had those kind of, those opportunities and those things happen that I would have only dreamt of as a boy, you know. It was, it was just a great time because I think um, musical could get uh, really big at that time because there were so many TV shows where they could see where you could see the stars and the songs and well you could get a real uh, bump with an artist or a musical like that. Yeah, yes. absolutely, absolutely. And there's nothing, you know, there's nothing like, you know, with those kind of musicals where everybody knows the songs. Um, again, it was the same with Greece when I played Danny Zicko in London with Greece. You know, John Travolta and Olivia Newton John came to see the show, and you're like, oh my God. And the, those kind of shows, Joseph, Greece, Summer Holiday, We Were Rock You, every single song that you begin to sing on stage, you can hear the buzz in the audience. You can sort of, you know, they're singing the words along with you. Um, and when you send that audience out at the end of the night, having performed those shows and everyone's singing and smiling and it's, it's an incredible feeling, you know, that I used to come in for a bit of criticism from the, I don't know, the more sort of hardcore publications, you know, it's like, oh, Darren Day always does that genre of happy musicals, popcorn, you know, musicals. But I loved doing it because there, there's, there was, for me, there was nothing like seeing the smiles on people's faces in the audience, sending people away happy, getting letters from people saying that, you know, they had such a wonderful experience. And I'm, I'm really, I can't wait to do that again. And, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I remember the enemy. So the enemy is a really, really sort of credible heavyweight music magazine, you know. Do you know what I mean, the enemy? You yes. know the one I mean? They, they reviewed one of my albums and they said Darren Day's album is so middle of the road he's in danger of getting run over at any point. <laughs> I, I never, I'll never forget that headline but I loved doing that stuff you know I, I the, and I put my hands up to you know I did all those kind of romantically happy um, family friendly shows that appealed to three generations most of my recordings were like that. The television shows I hosted were like that. You know, I always used to say, oh, here comes Darren Day with his cheesy grin. You know, but you can't go on Saturday night telly and like, you know, you look at <laughs> and, and show the old Nashers a bit. But, um, but I loved doing those kind of shows. And I know that Chicago, you know, it's going to be like that again. Uh, everyone knows the songs. Everyone loves yes. the show. It's going to be really exciting and I just feel really grateful. There were a couple of shows I did where I broke the mould a little bit. Um, on the back of Summer Holiday, I went and played Frankenfurter in the Rocky Horror Show. And I remember Richard O'Brien coming back to me on the opening night and saying, you can say anything you want, Darren. You know, there are no holds barred. Whatever the audience shout at you, 
you can say anything back. You know, there are no there are no limitations with with Frankfurt, and it, it was quite liberating to 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 do that show and to play that role. And um, and I, you know, I did let him have it on occasions because uh, I think also, you know, when you're hiding behind a character where you're you're so unrecognizable. Um, as Frank and Furter, your inhibitions drop seriously. And I remember my, uh, the girl that used to dress me for that, she said, it's when the shoes go on. She said, like, because the shoes were the last thing to go on. They just had the wig on and the makeup and all this stuff. But she said, when the shoes go on, when the high heel stilettos go on, you are Frank, whether that's on stage or off. And I think she was right. Um, but yeah, it was it was really good to sort of break the mold and move away from the kind of shows that I'd done. The the show I did directly before that actually was Greece, um, and I went straight from playing. Uh, I went from summer holiday to to Greece to Rocky Horror Show. So having sort of been John Travolta for three months or six months actually, um, to then go and play Frankfurt uh, from having played those kind of roles, it was uh, it was incredibly liberating. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I've been really lucky, Danny. When wilt thou save the people, O oh God of mercy, when? Not kings and lords, but nations, not thrones and crowns, but men. Of thy heart, O oh God, are they? Let them not pass like weeds away. Their heritage, a summer's day. God save the people. Shall cry bring crime forever? Strength fading, still strong. Is it thy will, O oh Father? shall toil for on. No say thy mountains, no say thy skies, man's clouded sun shall brightly rise, and songs be heard instead of sighs. God save the people.
That was When Wilt Thou Save the People by Darren Day from Godspell. Okay, I want to go to um, your favorite songs. Okay. Um, Copacabana, Who Needs to Dream? Yeah. I know it's a bit of a random one because I, I think unless you were a Barry Manilow fan or a Copacabana fan, I don't think people would be familiar with this song. And uh, I mean, I was familiar with it pre doing the show because I, I'm quite a Barry fan, you know. I perhaps back in the day wouldn't have told my mates down the pub that <laughs> I was. But I, I've, I've, I've always really rated Barry Manilow. And I think he's one of the, I, I think, you know, there's very few that can structure a ballad as well as he can. And uh, I'd, I'd got albums of Barry Manilow's and Who Needs to Dream was on them and I always loved it. But the way that it was arranged for, uh, for the live show, it was arranged, it, it, the arrangement was fantastic. It really built and there was a, a big massive note at the end and it was a lovely scene. And I, uh, I just used to look forward to singing that every day sometimes you might come in on a Wednesday matinee and it's wet outside and you're a bit tired and whatever you know and you sort of have to really get yourself charged to do a show but no matter how many times I performed that show when Who Needs to Dream started I just I, I loved singing it every single day and uh, when I do my live concert shows now with my band uh, most of the time we do that we, we do Who Needs to Dream. I just think it's a beautiful track. It is, yes. You were in my dreams, always in my dreams. That was long before I ever saw you standing there. When I felt afraid of the choice I made. I would close my eyes and hope my dreams would comfort me, but now I'm free. Who needs to dream when there is you? Who needs a heaven to look for?
That was Who Needs to Dream from Copacabana by Barry Manilow. Close every door from Joseph. Yeah, I've got to put that in, you know, uh, because um, I think the thing that, that I remember from the first night and pretty much every performance was the spectacle, you know, the show was... Uh, the, the the scenery the costumes the spectacle of it was just phenomenal and um there was this incredible thing that happened uh as every close every door started and on this massive stage you know these these bars these prison bars just came down and you know you were behind these prison bars it was a, it was an incredible effect when it happened and I think probably on the first night, up until Close Every Door, which is sort of maybe two thirds of the way through Act One, it's a blur because, you know, like you just, I'm at the Palladium, it's a full house. It's like I'm doing the dream job at the dream venue. And I, and I can't recall much up to Close Every Door, but because everything sort of settles down, it's just you on stage from being on stage with the rest of the cast. And these incredible bars coming down that I knew what that looked like from the audience, you know, from the audience's perspective. And it used to give me chills when I'd seen it in the auditorium. And so the fact that I was then doing that. And it's it's when I start to remember the first night is when I think I settled. And I just remember singing that. Song. It's such a journey. Um, without saying it too show busy, it's such a journey for Joseph, that song, from where he starts and the hope that builds and then a wonderful children's choir comes in with you and you're singing with the children on stage, it's magical. Um, and so, yeah, Close Every Door is really special to me. I've sung it many times. Um, I, did it on a, I did it on one of my albums uh, a few years ago. So, yeah, it's got to be there. It has to be there. Close every door to me Hide all the world from me Bar all the windows And shut out the light Do what you want And laugh at me, darken my daytime and torture my night. If my life were important, I would ask, will I live or die? But I know the answers lie far from this world. Close
was Close Every Door to Me by Philip Schofield from Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. You know, they always say, um, what's the one that got away? You know, like a role or a part or a musical or a job. Uh, what's the one that got away? And for me, it was Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard. Uh, when I was doing Copacabana, um, my friend John Barrowman was playing uh, Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard in London at the Adelphi. He was fantastic. And I remember going to see it and I, it's my favourite Android Webber show. And I'm lucky enough to call Don Black, who wrote the lyrics, a friend. I've known Don for many, many years. I think his, I mean, I, I love his lyrics anyway, but I think the collaboration of, of Andrew and Don with Sunset Boulevard was just magical. And, I, and it's like, for me, it was the first time I'd seen what for me was a movie on stage. Uh, and I wanted it so badly. And then, as I said earlier, I was offered summer holiday while I was doing Copacabana. And I, I said, yes, the summer holiday, we were contracted. And then in my last week of Coca Copacabana, I got offered three months as Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard for the following year. But I'd already signed for summer holiday. And don't get me wrong, I wouldn't have missed, I wouldn't have missed out on doing summer holiday for all the world. But if there is a part that got away from me that I would have loved to have done, and I'm too old to do now, let's face it, it was Joe Gillis in Sunset. So every time we, every time I get the opportunity to sing that on stage, I do. And again, I put that on that album um, that I talked about earlier. I just think it's such a, it's such a dramatic song. And uh, yeah, I love it. I love the arrangement. I love the lyrics. I came out here to make my name Wanted my pool, my dose of fame Wanted my parking space at Warner's But after a year of one-room hell A Murphy bed, a rancid smell Wallpaper peeling at the corners Sunset Boulevard, twisting Boulevard Secretive and rich, a little scary Sunset Boulevard, tempting Boulevard Waiting there to swallow the unwary Dreams are not enough to win a war Out here they're always keeping score Beneath the tan the battle rages Smile a rented smile for someone's glass Kiss someone's wife, kiss someone's ass We do whatever pays the wages Sunset Boulevard, headline Boulevard Getting here is only the beginning Sunset Boulevard, Jackpot Boulevard Once you won, you have to go on winning You think I've sold out dead right, I've sold out I just keep waiting for the right offer Comfortable quarters, regular rations 24-hour, five-star room service And if I'm honest, I like the lady I can't help being touched by her folly I'm treading water, taking the money Watching her sunset Well, I'm a writer L.A.'s changed a lot over the years Since those brave gold rush pioneers Came in their creaky covered wagons Far as they could go into the line Their dreams were yours, their dreams were mine But in those dreams were hidden dragons Sunset Boulevard, frenzied Boulevard Swamped with every kind of false emotion Sunset Boulevard, brutal Boulevard Just like you will wind up in the ocean She was sinking fast, I threw a rope Now I have suits and she is hope It seemed an elegant solution One day this must end, it isn't real Still I'll enjoy a hearty meal Before tomorrow's execution Sunset Boulevard, ruthless Boulevard Destination for the stony hearted Sunset Boulevard, lethal Boulevard Everyone's forgotten how they started Here on Sunset Boulevard
That was Sunset Boulevard from Sunset Boulevard by Alan Campbell. So, Darren, there's this rumor that you were almost the Phantom? Um, I was offered the Phantom in 2011, and I was on tour with another show, and I, they asked me to go in for six weeks, and I couldn't do it because I was already committed. But I have done... I've done a couple of the sort of the big live West End concert things. Um, and I have, and I've, I've done, I have done music of the night a couple of times with the mask on and in the gear. Um, and yeah, it, it would definitely be, I would love to do the show one day just to say I've done it because uh, I love the music and particularly music of the night. Um, it's a big scene, but um, the times I've performed it live, I've really enjoyed doing it. And, uh, and I did an album four years ago, uh, a musical theatre album, and I, and I did Music of the Night on the album as well. So I've done it in a, in a studio, and I've also done it on stage live. And I would love to do it in context one day of the actual show, you know. It would be great. It would be lovely, yeah, yes. yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, Danny. You're listening to Theatreland Radio. God on with Bring Him Home from Les Miserables. Now we have a rare version of Angel of Music from Phantom by original Christine understudy Maria Kesselman. Thank you. 
to save La Cave de Gaston Leroux, the home of phantom history. You can find out how on the Theaterland Radio website and divinevarod.com. If the poet we were discussing remains in the wazir's barnyard, I fear he really is a fool. Oh, Omar, my friend, there is always something to be learned, even from fools. an olive tree and a wondrous thought had he so he rose and he told it to the sky and where was I behind the tree I overheard his reverie why be content with an olive when you could have the tree why be content to be nothing when there's nothing you couldn't be? Why be contented with one olive tree when you could have the whole olive grove? Why be content with a grove when you could have the world? The fool stood beneath the olive tree. What a wondrous thought, said he. But alas, it is very, very deep. And then he yawned and went to sleep. Because you see, he was a fool. Why be content with an olive when you could have the tree? That which has lulled you to sleep, fool, has awakened me. Why should I sigh that my lot is my lot, that I can't make it anything more, when this is a lie, an excuse for a fool to steal? That was Ethan Freeman with the olive tree from the official BBC cast recording of Kismet. And that is all we've got time for this week. I will end with a special request. After we played a song from the translated version of a German musical Rebecca last time, a lot of people told us they wanted to hear more. So we will deliver. Here is Uwe Kroger with Oh My God, I'm Such a Fool. I hope you enjoyed the show. My name is Danny Cohen. Till next time. Bye.
Am I supposed to sleep? This house that used to be my home is hell, and I'm a man who's doomed. How could I hope? I ever could be saved. The past will always haunt me, haunt me. Oh my God, I'm such a fool. What madness to come back? When I was a little boy, I loved to listen to the roaring sea. When I woke up at night, now every sound reminds and tortures me. The Will always haunt me, haunt me. Oh my God, I'm such a fool. What madness to come back? Oh, the ghosts I left behind—they've been waiting here for my return. Some say that a woman's love could save a man who's cursed. Again, I could, but I'd be always on the run. There could be no escape. When I'm too weak to fight my memories, the past will always haunt me, haunt me. Oh my God, I'm such a fool. What madness to come back? All the ghosts I left behind. Behind the Mirror of Music with Danny Cohen. Coming to you live from the UK, celebrating the world of theatre. You're listening to Theatreland Radio.